let's take a look at finding the population standard deviation from frequency table and then we'll um, also look at uh, the population variance while we're at it. Now um, with this formula we got um, X which is our class midpoints, F which is our frequency, and Mu which is our mean. Uh, so the first thing we're going to have to do is find the mean. Now I know this formula says X bar but when you're talking about the mean remember the formula for X bar is the same as Mu so that doesn't change at all. But let's find that first. Uh, let me uh, delete all this and we'll start over. And let me, um, let's see, go to, I don't know, something a little bit different, maybe four. And I'll keep adding four over and over. Eight, uh, twelve, sixteen. And uh, then this will be seven. Um, this one will be eleven. This one will be fifteen. Now how I'm l deciding that is I'm looking at this lower class and this one ends at fifteen, so this one starts at sixteen. My class width is 4, so I could just keep adding 4 over and over. So if I add 4 to 15, this is 19. Okay. Then we have our frequency. Now frequency is F, I think, so let me go ahead and put F after it like that. And let me make up numbers. 8, 12, 3, and 4. Okay, so this is what you're given. You're given that between 4 and 7, there's 8 of whatever. Between 8 and 11, there's 12. Between 12 and 15, there's 3. And between 16 and 19, there's 4. Well, we need f times x. Um, well, actually, we need x first, don't we? So let's find the midpoints. This will be x. Now, midpoints is going to be the this lower class limit plus the next lower class limit divided by 2. So formula-wise, that will be equals beginning parentheses, have to have the beginning parentheses, a2 plus a3. So that's adding the current LCL plus the next one. Close parentheses, divide by 2. Enter. And again, I click this cell, put my mouse in the lower right hand corner until it becomes a plus. Press my left mouse, uh, mouse button and hold down on it. And then drag down. Now the last one's wrong because we don't have a lower class limit here, but I can, I can put a, uh, one there to kind of fudge, fudge it. And those are our midpoints. Well, from our formula, we need f times x. So here we got f times x. So this is going to equal um, c2 times d2. So f times x. And you're doing it for that row, so do enter. Now I can click this, put my mouse in the lower right-hand corner, it becomes a plus, hold my left mouse button down, and drag down. And that's my f times x. Okay. Well, this uh, E looking thing before it is uh, uppercase sigma. That means I'm going to sum that column. So I come over here, click uh, right below that column, and I want to be in the Home tab, and I'll click the Auto Sum button. Then I'll click my check mark. Now we also need um, uh, sigma F, so we want to add together the F column. So I come over here. Uh, right below that column and press my auto sum again and uh, you can press enter if you want to, to choose that. Okay, so our mean um, I'll do come over here put equals and it's going to be E6 divided by F6. F6. Try it again. C6. <laughs> there we go. Um, the sum of F times X divided by the sum of F sum of f times x divided by the sum of f. Okay, so that's going to be our mean. We're going to use that in our, our calculation. So let's go back to our formula. Okay, so now I'm going to need um, x minus the mu. x is our, our midpoints. x minus mu squared times f. f is our frequency. So this is going to be um, x minus mu squared times f. Now the care two is squared. Okay, so do an equals. I'll do a beginning parentheses. X was our midpoint, so that's D two minus mu, which is at B eight. And I'm gonna put dollar sign dollar sign B dollar sign eight there. 
That's absolute referencing. So when we fill down, it'll always point to B8. Close parentheses, care 2, times F, which is in uh, C2. Like that. Now, the neat part about that is, is they type in the formula. It will automatically um, put little color boxes around what you're dealing with, so you know you're picking the right numbers. And then I'll press Enter. Well, I'm going to come up here, click this, and fill down. So I'll put my mouse in the right lower right-hand corner. Go down like that. Now, this sigma that's in front of it means I'm going to add those together. So I click down right below it, and I click the Auto Sum button. And choose my check mark. Now, this bottom one is the sum of F, which I think I already summed to F. It's right here. So now we're ready for our formula. So our population, standard deviation, and expand that a little bit. There we go. We're going to equal to square root. We've got square root around all of it. And then the sum of all that, which was F6, divided by sum of F, which is um, C6. And then close parentheses. And that gives us our population standard deviation. Now, um, for a population variance. Now, those equals I'm putting right here, that has nothing to do with anything. That's just a cosmetic thing. Here I'll do equals, and this will be B9 um, squared. So I'll do caret 2. Caret is above your 6 um, key on your keyboard. You just do shift 6. And then press enter. And that gives us our population variance. And that's how you find the sample standard deviation pop and, and the, not sample, that's how you find a population standard deviation and population variance of a frequency table.